Hey everyone, I thought it would be really fun to do another come book shopping with me vlog. So I'm at Half Price Books today. I love used book shopping because it's a little bit different than going to Barnes & Noble or a regular bookshop because you never know what they'll have in stock and you never know what you're going to find. And it's kind of like a treasure hunt. So let's go treasure hunting. They have this really cool section that has lots of rare editions and antique editions. Sometimes they have things with movies and music. Look at this, I found an antique edition of Little Dorrit yeah. by Charles Dickens. It's an actual oh, antique book. And really it's not badly priced, it's $15. It's in great condition. I just had to show you this drawing, so cool. And see these are like the really nice leather bound fine bindings. So there's Anthony Trollope who I've been wanting to read. Beautiful edition of Pride and Prejudice. And see, this is only $25 for something that's leather bound and really gorgeous. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is a rare reel to reel, only 500 made edition of Star Wars the movie. But it's an actual film reel, two reels. This is perfect for the ultimate Star Wars fan and cinephile. As someone who absolutely loves classic cinema and just film in general and performing arts, I always have to check the performing arts section because they have lots of cool things about music and film. And I found a lot of really interesting books about uh, screenwriting, uh, favorite directors or types of movies here. I have actually read the leading men version of this book by TCM and it's kind of just a fun little flip through book. It kind of tells you the main leading actors and actresses from the golden era of Hollywood. And look, I flipped right open to one of my favorite actresses, Audrey Hepburn. I actually had to read this book for class in my master's program for film studies. Every film theory class is going to talk about Sergei Eisenstein, so it's kind of fun that you can find textbooks here. So look, this is only $8.99. I guarantee you I probably had to pay more than that at the university bookstore. Sergei Eisenstein did a lot to develop montage and um, juxtapositions and the way that we see a story and understand a story just through the editing. You can thank this guy because he kind of developed the cinematic art form of editing. I'm kind of looking through my to read list here just to see if there's anything that I haven't thought of that they might have in stock. This is a definite must purchase for me. It's $5.49. It's an Oxford edition of A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. It's kind of a tie between this and Much Ado About Nothing. And even though I have the complete works of Shakespeare at home, I love these Oxford editions because about half of this book is an introduction, and the introduction is usually written by a professor. It's got a lot of interesting information about the history of the play, what it means, and then it has a lot of explanatory notes. So I love the Oxford edition for anything that you're studying. Take a look at this, there's the play, and then half the page is just awesome explanatory notes, and you can learn so much more about the story and the language and just the depth of Shakespeare by reading editions like this. Another section I love is the reference section because you can often find really cool biographies about your favorite authors, especially classic authors, and um, sometimes, let's see, they have memoirs, they have letters, literary criticism, so this is kind of a fun section. I know that DVDs are kind of becoming obsolete, but that's why it's great to get them at half price books because you can often find them really inexpensively. And sometimes you just want to have your own copy of something like Charade. It has Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn, two of my favorite actors of all time. This is a little bit a uh, newer movie, well, newer in terms of me because I like 1930s and 40s. So I think this was done in the early 60s, 1963. Cary Grant is hilarious in it. So fun story. 
Cary Grant did not want to be in this film because of Audrey Hepburn because he didn't want to be seen as the creepy old guy in a romance. So the only way he would agree to be in it is if his character was not chasing her at all, if she chased him. And so that actually makes for an interesting kind of feminist slant on an old romantic comedy mystery. This is a romantic mystery movie. Romantic comedy mystery. Yeah, it's got everything. And there's a really funny scene, I won't spoil it, but I will just say it involves uh, Cary Grant showering with his suit on. And uh, you guys should watch it. I think it's actually streaming on Amazon Prime right now. I did not need to buy this because I already own it. I have the special edition of Singing in the Rain. If I had had to be pressed, to name a favorite movie musical, this one would definitely be it. The movie is so, so funny, and the singing and dancing is amazing. It has Gene Kelly, who's incredibly dreamy, and it has Debbie Reynolds, who is Carrie Fisher's mom. Oh my gosh, and Donald O'Connor, he's so funny. And if you guys are following me because of Disney, then you really should watch this film, because there was a scene in The Great Movie Ride with Gene Kelly doing his famous dance outside in the rain in The Great Movie Ride. Rest in peace, great movie ride. I'm still not over the loss of that of that ride, of that attraction. But since we can't ride it, you might as well watch Singing in the Rain. Oh, look at this. It's a Doris Day collection, six movies for $9.99. That's a pretty good deal, guys. I really like her movies. I need to watch a few more of them. I haven't seen some of these, so hmm, might have to think about this. possible for me to go to a bookstore and leave empty-handed. I did pick up a few things at Half Price Books the other day and I wanted to show them to you. I'm really really excited about this book. It's called To Marry an English Lord and it's a book that inspired the TV show Downton Abbey and I love that show so much. I can't wait for the movie to come out in theaters. I'm excited to go see it. So I thought it would be the perfect time to get a book that inspired that TV series. It says on the back that it is about 100 American heiresses who invaded Britannia and swapped dollars for titles filled with a wealth of historical personalities, grand houses, gossipy anecdotes, and the very finest points of etiquette that ruled Victorian and Edwardian society. To marry an English lord is their story. So it's about actually several people. It has a lot of pictures, it's got a lot of historical information, and I should mention it's definitely not a fiction book. It is a historical book and it has a lot of facts here talks about their daily routine. I'm really excited to have a book that tells me a little bit more about this era in history and the dynamic between the American heiresses and the British lords. Next, I did not end up buying the copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream that I found because it was a little bit torn and damaged on the cover when I looked at it closer, but I kept looking and I found Much Ado About Nothing, which is my second favorite play, as I mentioned. I don't know if it's the best place to start if you haven't read Shakespeare. Romeo and Julia is a good place to start because so many of us know that story, and I also think A Midsummer Night's Dream is a really good place to start, but this is a great romantic comedy that centers around two couples. Hero and Claudio are kind of the main plot drivers. There is a evil ploy basically to keep them apart and so that keeps the plot going. There's lots of trickery and mistaken identities and then Beatrice and Benedict who are my favorite couple in this story. They are so funny. There's a lot of banter, a lot of clever lines. They're sort of the supporting couple but they keep the story going in a very funny and entertaining way. I can't wait to read this edition of it. It looks like it has some I think it has some pictures of maybe, oh yeah, it has some pictures of productions of the play in the introduction, so I'm excited to learn more about it. Next, I found Great Expectations by Charles Dickens in an Oxford edition, and I have never read Charles Dickens. I've always wanted to. It's a big gap in my British classics knowledge, so I've heard that Great Expectations is a really good place to dive in. I don't know much about the story. If you like Charles Dickens, definitely write in the comments below which story you think I should read if, um, if I do end up liking this and want to read more Charles Dickens, but I know it's about an orphan named Pip, and I know that there is a lot of mystery and intrigue and romance. I'm not sure exactly what else happens in the story, but sometimes it's good to go into something blind and just know that a lot of people love this one. So I'll find out. I'll let you know what I think. I'll have to report back. And I did buy this six movie special collection of Doris Day films. 
I was absolutely sold when I looked at the back cover because it says that it has a pillow talk feature commentary with film historians, the making of The Man Who Knew Too Much, and Chemistry 101, the film duo of Doris Day and Rock Hudson. So I love features, especially commentaries. I do have a few DVDs from Turner Classic Movies that have commentaries with film historians, and I have some Criterion Collection editions, and I think those are so interesting because you get a little bit of the history, you get a little bit of the behind the scenes that you learn so much by the end. So that sold me on that. Special features always sell me on DVDs. They also have The Man Who Knew Too Much in this collection aside from her romantic comedies and that's a Hitchcock film and I actually really like Hitchcock films I took a class on Hitchcock and I'm interested to see this movie because I haven't actually seen the man who knew too much I've only just read about it so that'll be good and I've seen Pillow Talk, but it's been a long time, so I'm excited to dive into these. Last, I picked up this collection of James Thurber's writings and drawings. He was a humorist who had quite a long career, and I know that he influenced a lot of 1930s and 40s comedies. This is kind of a thick edition with his greatest hits, and so I'm looking forward to seeing what his humor is all about. I've really enjoyed making these book vlogs. I hope that you guys are enjoying them too. I've had a really great positive reaction about them, so that makes me really happy. I'm excited to make more because when I'm not at Disney I am usually at a bookstore or reading that is my favorite activity and I definitely have a few requests uh, for other types of vlogs that you guys have sent in to me through Instagram so I'm definitely planning those and a few more Disney vlogs of course I have lots of those coming up actually so until next time I will see you real soon thanks so much for watching bye